In section 24.4.5, we need to continue our discussion of these additional circle concepts by talking about inscribed angles. We discussed central angles a few pages ago in the context of arcs and sectors. All a central angle is, is an angle with its vertex at the center of a circle. So this would be a central angle. Uh, this would be a central angle. So again, any angle, this would be a central angle. And of course, the total number of degrees in the central angle of a circle is 360. You can also measure that in radians, 2 pi radians. So we've discussed central angles. We need to talk about inscribed angles. Instead of having a vertex at the center of a circle, an inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle. So let's jump down here so that we can actually see what this looks like. So again, here's a central angle with vertex at the center of this circle P. And then we have an inscribed angle, angle BAC or angle CAB or just angle A, whatever the heck you want to call it. But you can see that the vertex of this angle lies on the circle and that angle is formed by the intersection of two chords. You have chord AB, you have chord AC. Those two chords intersect on the circle's circumference. And again, inside the circle there, they will form an inscribed angle. Now, in terms of the relationship between the inscribed angle and the central angle or the inscribed angle and what we call the captured arc. So notice that chords AB and AC, the two chords that intersect to form this inscribed angle. They capture an arc. They intercept an arc. They cut off a piece of the circle's circumference from the rest of the circumference. We do need to know the relationship between the inscribed angle, that captured arc, and the central angle. You already know that the central angle, or you should know, that the central angle equals the intercepted arc. So if the measure of that central angle is 110 degrees, then you would be capturing 110 degrees of arc. And again, that should be fairly obvious to see because, uh, you know, if you take the a, a central angle of 90 degrees, just a really simple central angle, you can see that you're capturing one fourth of the degrees of arc in this circle, right? There's 360 degrees total all the way around. A central angle of 90 degrees will capture 90 degrees of arc. So that's the relationship between the central angle and the intercepted arc. Those two uh, degree measures are equal. When it comes to the inscribed angle, the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc that it captures and also therefore half of the measure of the central angle. So if this inscribed angle were 30 degrees, we would know that the central angle is 60 degrees and the arc captured is 60 degrees. If the arc captured were, let's say, 100 degrees, the central angle is 100 degrees and the inscribed angle is half of that 100 degrees, which would be 50. So again, inscribed angle is always half of the degree measure of the captured arc and therefore half of the degree measure of the central angle. Or you can also say that the captured arc degree measure is twice the measure of the inscribed angle and the central angle is also twice the measure of the inscribed angle. It might also be worthwhile to point out that, and we are going to see an example that deals with this in a moment. Actually, we'll point out two things. Uh, I'll write other notes over here. So one is that you can have, so let's do, let's do this. I'm going to make an inscribed angle capturing uh, this arc. I'll call it arc AB. And then I'm going to make another inscribed angle capturing that arc. So there's an inscribed angle there, an inscribed angle there. And let's actually make a third here. Oops, that line got a little messy. Uh, that's better. So there's a third there. So if you notice all three of these inscribed angles that I've marked, one, two, and three, they all capture the same arc. So let's say that arc were, mm, I don't know, 70 degrees. That would mean that all of these inscribed angles are 35 degrees. Remember that an inscribed angle is half of the arc that the inscribed angle captures. 
And if you have multiple inscribed angles capturing the same arc, obviously that arc in all three situations has the same measure, that means that all of these inscribed angles are going to be equal to each other. So inscribed angles that capture the same arc or the same arc measure are going to be congruent to each other. That is one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are dealing with an inscribed angle whose chords, remember we said that two chords intersecting on a circle will make up an inscribed angle. So this is an inscribed angle. If the endpoints of those two chords, the, the non-intersecting endpoints of those two, two chords are endpoints of a diameter, so let's say uh, AC is a diameter, then we know that the inscribed angle is a right angle. And the reason we know that is because a diameter will cut off an arc of 180 degrees and therefore the inscribed angle being half of that 180 degrees will be 90. So a couple of, of other things to note before we jump into these examples. Let's take a look at our first example here, example 15. Obviously we're dealing with inscribed angles. If you're feeling confident on this, pause the video, do the example on your own, and then come back and join us. Point P is the center of the circle above. What is the degree measure of arc BC? We need degree measure of arc BC. So that is, I'm going to mark it. That is this arc right here. So here's how we can do this. And by the way, there are a few different ways to do questions like this. Usually you have multiple alternatives. I'll show you a second alternative after we do the method that involves inscribed angles. So notice that, first of all, we've got a 40 degree angle here. That means that captured arc AB, uh, that is the arc that is captured by the inscribed angle BCA here. So that means that arc AB will be twice the 40 degrees, making arc AB 80 degrees. Again, the inscribed angle is half of the captured arc. So because we have an 80 degree arc from A to B, and from B to C is the rest of the 180 degrees of arc, and I mentioned this a moment ago that when we have a diameter, the diameter obviously will break the circle up into two semicircles. So there are 180 degrees in the arc from A to B to C and 180 degrees in the, the bottom arc as well. Because we have 80 degrees of arc in arc AB, that means that arc BC, the one they're asking us about, must be the remaining 100 degrees. 180 minus the 80 degrees gives us 100 degrees. So arc BC must be 1. 100 degrees. That is the measure of arc B. So again, that's how you could use inscribed angles here to determine what arc BC's degree measure is. Another way that you could do this, you could actually use a couple of, of other methods. So, so here, uh, this will be method one, this will be method two. So method two, you could actually use something we've already discussed. So I know that this is 40 degrees. If I draw in another radius here, Remember earlier in the circle section, we talked about the fact that when we form a triangle with two radii, because those two radii are equal, we are looking at an isosceles triangle and the base angles of that isosceles triangle, in other words, this angle and this angle, the two angles across from the equal sides, those two angles must be equal to each other. In an isosceles triangle, we have two equal sides, two equal angles opposite those sides, so if I have a 40 here and a 40 here, in that triangle, I already have 80 degrees, which means this central angle, this is obviously not drawn to scale, but that central angle has to be the total number of degrees in the triangle minus the 80 degrees in the two angles we already have marked, and that would leave 100 degrees. So this central angle would be 100 degrees. And remember, we talked about this a moment ago, the central angle and the arc that that central angle cuts off or captures, they are equal to each other. Central angle and the arc degree measure are equal to each other, which means again, uh, BC from B to C would be 100 degrees of arc. That is another way that you could do that question. And here's even a third way that you could do this question. So instead of drawing this time a radius from the center of the circle up to uh, point B up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the triangle over here. And what that does 
is, also mentioned this a moment ago here, notice that this angle now is capturing half of the circle's degree measure, right? This is a, this is a diameter across here, that is A, C, and therefore there are 180 degrees of arc down here, there's 180 degrees of arc up here. So there are 180 degrees of arc down here from A all the way around to C, and that means that this angle in here is a 90 degree angle. It is a right angle, which is half of the arc degree measure that this inscribed angle intercepts or captures. And therefore we have a 40, we have a 90, this over here must be 50 degrees. So this inscribed angle here is 50 degrees. And of course that inscribed angle captures arc BC. And if the inscribed angle is 50, arc BC must be 100 degrees, twice the inscribed angle. Inscribed angle is half, the arc measure is twice the inscribed angle. So there are usually multiple ways to do these questions. And if you remain flexible, fortunately, if one of the methods fails or fails to come to you, you might be able to use an alternate method to solve these questions. In some of those methods, you do need to know the inscribed angle rules and, and in other methods, like in method two, you didn't really need to know the inscribed angle rule. In example 16, we have another variation of how inscribed angles might be tested. Also talked about this a moment ago. If you're, again, feeling confident with inscribed angles, go ahead and try example 16 on your own. In example 16, we have in the circle above, what is the degree measure arc AB? So we need the degree measure of this arc. Well, look, we've got two inscribed angles, one here, one here. They're the two marked angles, the degree measures of those angles are given in algebraic expressions. And both of those arcs intercept or cut off arc AB. So you'll notice that chord DA, if I extend it a little bit, chord DB, if I extend it a little bit, those two chords cut off that arc and then chord CA and chord CB also cut off that arc AB, which means that these two inscribed angles, since they capture the same arc, those two inscribed angles must be equal to each other. And now we're pretty much off to the races. All we have to do is set the two algebraic expressions representing the degree measures of angle D and angle C, the two inscribed angles that are equal to each other. We just need to set those algebraic expressions equal to each other. And we begin to solve. I'll add five to both sides. I get three X plus 15 equals six X. To keep everything positive here, I will subtract three X from both sides. I get 15 equals three X. Writing down all of my intermediate steps, I'm gonna divide by three, divide by three. I get that X equals five. We do have to be careful on a question like this. They are not asking us for the value of X. They are asking us for the value of arc AB. Always gotta recheck the question before you answer. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that five. I'm gonna throw the five into this expression over here. So that's three times X, which is five plus 10. That's 15 plus 10. So that is 25 degrees. So that's the measure of these two angles, 25 degrees. But again, they are not asking us for the measures of the inscribed angles. They are asking us for the measure of the intercepted arc AB. And remember what we do to get that arc is we double the 25 because the 25 is half of the arc. The inscribed angle measure is half of the arc measure. And therefore that arc must be 50 degrees. And that is indeed what they are asking us for here. Got to be careful on those questions. Not asking for X, not asking for the inscribed angle measure. They are asking you for the arc measure. In our next example, example 17, we are going to integrate what we have learned about arcs and sectors with what we just learned about inscribed angles and how they relate to the central angle, how they relate to the captured arc. If you want to try example 17 on your own, pause the video. Triangle ABC is inscribed in the circle with center P above. If the circumference of the circle is 36 inches, what is the length arc BAC? So we need the length. Notice here, we're not being asked for a degree measure. We need the length of arc BAC. So that's this big arc. That's this major arc here, not this minor arc this major arc BAC. So first of all, when it 
the question says that a triangle or any shape is inscribed in a circle. It just means that the vertices of the polygon are on the circle and the shape is completely contained within a circle. As you can see here, triangle ABC completely contained within the circle and all the vertices are on the circumference of the circle. That's what it means for a shape to be inscribed in a circle. They tell us that the circumference of the circle is 36 inches. I'm going to write that down. Circumference is 36 inches and they want the length of arc BAC. All right. So first of all, let's use another piece of information given here, technically two pieces of information. We've got a 60 degree angle, a 70 degree angle. That means angle A. I can use my calculator here. Do I need to? Not really. Uh, 60 plus 70 is 130. You can certainly use your calculator here. And if you're uncertain about any of these calculations, I would encourage you to use your calculator. So 180 minus 30, that means this remaining angle here is 50 degrees. We might as well figure that out. Is it going to be important? Not necessarily. Although one of the ways that we could do this question is we could say that since this is 50 degrees here, we know that this is 100 degrees. So technically, we could use that 100 degrees to find out the length of arc BC, which would allow us to find the length of BAC. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this slightly more directly. Arc AC. Arc AC must be 120. That is twice this 60 degree angle. And arc AB. Arc AB must be 140. That is twice this 70 degree angle. What that means is that there are 260 degrees of arc from B to A to C, which means if I were to draw a central angle, which I am going to do, it's not absolutely necessary that I do this, but if I draw this central angle, let's call it BPC, but I'm talking about this big angle BPC, that central angle must be 260 degrees. So there are 260 degrees in the central angle that captures the 260 degree arc that they are asking us about. Now, again, they're not asking us for the degree measure of that arc. They're asking us for the length of that arc. So what we need to do is we need to use our arc formula. And remember, we said that our arc formula was the arc equals the central angle measure out of 360 times the circumference times 2 pi r. So I'm just going to start plugging in some stuff here. Uh, the arc is what I need. My central angle measure is 260 degrees. That is out of 360 degrees times a circumference of 36. That's given to me. So this is now very simple. The zeros cancel, the 36 is cancel, and I get 26. And that should be the length of arc BAC. There it is. So again, what we did here is we determined what all of the arc degree measures were based on the inscribed angles and then used how many degrees of arc there were from B to A to C, 260 degrees of arc. We put that 260 degrees over 360 to find out what portion of the circle's circumference was taken up from B to A to C, and then we simply multiplied that ratio by the total circumference to get the portion, the length portion of the circumference that was uh, taken up by arc B, A, C. So there is our answer, 26. That is it for inscribed angles.